important person for our rights in this town. If you're not sure the history of the building that you're standing in, the owner, Richard, is going to come up here and just say one or two words about his role in fighting for our rights and why it's important to him, this business, yada yada yada, whatever you'd like to say. So, welcome to the stage, Richard. Yay, Richard! Well, first of all, thank you all for being here and supporting us as a business. We, uh, we struggled during COVID. We're getting our business back and, and it's people that you know, are coming in like you that have really made it possible. And so we want to tell you, we don't take it for granted. We appreciate you. And we have the best staff uh, at, at uh, Port Richards, and Little Richards. And we, we are so lucky, Patricia and I. I get all the credit because my name is on the business, but my wife Patricia is my full business partner. She runs the toy store and the bookstore and the restaurant guy. And when I got COVID, I was really afraid that I was going to lose my sense of taste because that's kind of my main job. Is <laughs> And hopefully you like the food, and if not, please tell me right away. That's, that's really important. Uh, occasionally somebody will say, oh, I had soup six months ago, and it was too peppery. It was like, yeah, it doesn't do me good. But, uh, but, but we, we have a history here. Um, like Carol and Kathy is, you know, is here in the audience, and there's a few of the old timers. But we were a place uh, where we happened to have a lot of LGBTQ employees. Uh, Patricia and I have lots of uh, friends and family members, and, and, I, and I went through some real trauma. I lived in New York City for a while during the AIDS crisis. I worked in the village on the street. I helped run a little shop there. And so I saw a lot of people suffer, including my best friend, Stephen, who was my best friend through college and after college. And a lot of people wouldn't even say our names without the other, it's Stephen and Richard. Wow. Well, he got AIDS, and he died in my arms. He finally um, reconciled with his parents, who his father was disowned him until right before his death. And I watched what he went through back when, when um, he was a leper. People would not even cut his hair. They wouldn't, they wouldn't want to walk on the same side of the street as him. And, uh, and then... Came to Colorado Springs uh, uh, from you know living in New York for a little while. I, I had lived lived here. We opened this in '77, and and then I was in New York from '86 to '90, and came back with a New York style pizza. I trained in uh, in Yonkers at the Pizza Emporium. Frank and Frank with the gold chains down to here, and the shirts up to there. But uh, that was right when Focus and the family moved to Colorado Springs. So we, uh, we didn't realize, you know, they, they, were, uh, they had what they called principled persuasion. They said, let's take our opponents, and they identified me as one, and, uh, and invite them in, and let's show them how reasonable we are. And at the time, they had what they called a community impact workshop. 650 people from around the state. They had professors from all over the country, and they talked to them about how to take over school boards and library boards and run for local office and to get your ducks in a row. Don't be a concerned Christian, be a concerned parent. And if you need help, we will give you professional help. We have professional media experts and we will help you with campaigns. Does this sound familiar today? So. Focus came, the largest radio ministry in the world, 26 million listeners in 24 languages. Dr. Dobson, all you had to say was uh, send a, a, a gift or a donation to Focus on the Family Colorado Springs. Didn't even need an address. And, uh, and then Amendment 2 happened. And Carol uh, probably remembers, we, we, had a, we were gonna have a celebration party here for its defeat, because the polling said it was gonna lose. We had champagne, yeah, we didn't pop anything. We, we walked, uh, walked out that night in tears, and oh my God, we did not know 
what we were going to be dealing with. As, as, a, as a city, as a, a community, as friends, as people that worked here, people that lived here. It was the culture wars, big time. In fact, Colorado Springs was the center of anti-gay think tanking for the whole country. These, these initiatives like Amendment 2. If you don't know what Amendment 2 was, it didn't allow any government in the state of Colorado to, protect, to have protections for people based on their sexual orientation. Uh, and, and so it could be in, in accommodations, you could be denied a room in a hotel, it could be a job, it could be uh, uh, a, uh, a way of, uh, of living. You could be kicked out of your apartment if, if you, even though your lease said you could be there if you were identified as being LGBTQ. So, so we as a business, and, and by the way, we weren't the only place. There was the hide and seek, and there was other businesses around that really took a chance. Uh, and, and I kind of became a spokesperson because I was straight. And, and the people, partly, you know, people that are LGBTQ were afraid. Uh, they didn't want to get out there because they were afraid maybe they're going to lose their job or get kicked out of their apartment. But also they were all, well, Richard's a business guy and he's, you know, kind of normal. He's not one of them. And so let's listen to him. So I was on radio shows and I was, uh, you know, we had debates with Will Perkins, who, who was the founder of, uh, of, of Colorado for Family Values, who initiated Amendment 2. And, and, but boy, all these crazy people came out of the woodworks. But we had death threats. We had uh, bricks thrown through our window with notes on them saying it's uh, Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. <coughs> bomb threats. We would show movies in the movie theater, and every night there was a bomb threat. The, the uh, police would come and search the whole place, and then they would uh, they'd say, we don't see a bomb, Richard. Uh, so what do you think? Do you want to still show the movie? You know, we showed uh, the, uh, the Times of, uh, of Harvey Milk. And we had people out here with crosses. Gay Pride Parade was a was a hundred of us. And Carol, Carolyn knows, and and because everybody was scared to to have somebody recognize them and who they were, and then there was like a hundred of them out there going, "You were a sodomist, Richard Scorman. You know, you're gonna burn in hell." And I said, "Well, if you're if I'm gonna burn in hell, why give me a headache first? You know, just like, <laughs> uh, and. Uh, and then uh, we had our two managers, a very beloved uh, Pam and Jeannie, uh, who were not married because they couldn't be, but they would have been, and they had kids, and their kids worked here, and Pam's brother died in Wisconsin, and we uh, had to, uh, they had to drive there because Jeannie couldn't get a bereavement fair. You know, back then, it, just, it was just not possible. <coughs> Well, they were in Nebraska, there was a dust storm, there was a UPS truck that uh, slammed into them, they were both killed. Oh, what a heartbreak for us. We, we, uh, we, I, I happened to be the vice mayor of the city then, and Fred Phelps from Westboro Baptist Church came over to the uh, Palmer High School because they wanted to have a gay straight alliance club. and. I got on the microphone, it was the day after, and I said, you are not a Christian. You, you do not represent those values, and you are not welcome in Colorado Springs. And I, I just, I lost it. I, I, ne I usually never did publicly. Well, the next week he came out here demonstrating in front of Poor Richards. And, and, uh, and, and I'm proud of that. Yeah. But, 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 uh, but, but to have, I'm just you know, talking a little bit about the, all, the, all the background and the history. And, but thank God that we have the power, you have the power today. You know, get rid of us old white guys, by the way. Uh, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think women should run, women should run the world and LGBTQ people. But, but that's my thought. But, but, but thank you for everything that people have done in this last last few days, the, the, the days of such sharp sorrow and shock. And instead of retreating and being scared, people are out there. They're embracing each other. They're giving each other hugs. And uh, what a blessing. We've come a long way. We have a ways to go. But. 
but thank you all for, for being who you are and not being afraid. We're, we're all in this with you together. Th thank you. Thank you, Richard. That was a good story, everyone. Amazing. All right, coming up next, it's actually me again, but I'm with my wonderful roommate, Madeline, so we need to set up a little bit, but then 